This is the Talking House Range Extender RE 2.5 Outdoor Antenna and Tuner. It's to be used with the Talking House Transmitter. This is supposed to extend the range of the Talking House Transmitter. They're saying as the range extender increases the effective signal range of a talking house transmitter from hundreds to more than a thousand feet. Here's one that I've built for far less money. This is the inside look of the commercially available range extender. You can see there's not much to it really. In fact, they're using the same dual coil tuning unit that they use in the transmitter, minus the motor. So they use the same thing. This part is the RF transformer. Can't see the number real well there, but I looked at it earlier. It's the same as this one. Nothing magic about it. The part number is SWB1040 PCL. Wide band RF transformer. Interesting that it has the TH. That's probably an abbreviation for talking house. Don't know, couldn't say for sure. I think the 250M is 250 milliwatts. To get it from Mauser, that is the part number. So here's my home built range extender. I used cover and uh, used some aluminum stock and an electrical box and some hose clamps and here's how I built it. Here's the item used for making range extender. U-channel. This is aluminum U-channel. That is an angle, aluminum angle, plastic outdoor electrical box and the cover. The TAMAC electrical box. There's the number. Here it is. Of course it had some holes in it which they have a kit of plugs you can put in there, block off the holes that I won't be using. This is the cover. It's a weatherproof cover. There will be enough room in here to put the components for the tuning. This cover comes with screws and it's a Bell Outdoor plastic blank cover with for wet locations. Aluminum I'm going to use for the mounting it to the pole. Use hose clamps to mount this to the pole. So that's all done. I put it in the on the side here so the screws will dig into the plastic more there. They work. Here's the inside of it. There's a screw that goes through it, connects to that side right there. Makes contact with this angle bracket. So you can put a nut on that and make that a ground screw. So that's going to be the contact there for the antenna. Okay, it's coming together. Here's the antennas, one that's copper and one that's aluminum. They're about the same price. These are equal lengths, got seven sections, and it's come out to like six foot, about six foot eight inches after they're assembled. It's from this company here called KNS Precision Metals, and these can be found on uh, Amazon. The copper one is, there's the part number, 3404, telescoping tubing. So the aluminum one here, I didn't solder these together. That is actually uh, aluminum epoxy. Since aluminum is harder to solder, I just used this and it seemed to work very well. So this one, the copper one, was very easy to use a soldering gun and I was able to braze them together very, very nicely. It worked very well for the copper. This is the aluminum channel for which I'm going to put the antenna rod in. And this is four foot section, right? It was made by Hillman Company. It's aluminum channel. It's called trim channel for half inch plywood. It's a four foot section. To take the antenna rod, in this case, I wanted 
aluminum with aluminum. And that just lays in there right like that. So this rod and this four foot section here will be 10 foot. I have marked mine at four, 10 foot. Take a piece of wood dowel. So now we just take that and run the hose clamp up over it like so. Clamp and just tighten it. There it is, snug fit. I can Here's the original range extender schematic. This is the coil, the two coils that they have in the range extender. I've used a substitute, and this is the circuit. First of all, we have the coil craft SWB1040 transformer, and there's the pinouts. And then over here is rectifies the RF signal, and then you have the meter circuit over here. The original schematic showed a 50 microamp. I've used a 1 milliamp meter, which works fine. And so I have a 50K and a 22K, and sets the uh, scale on the meter. The 1N4148, you can use a 1N914. They're the same thing. Here is a 1 millihenry RF choke. The RF input. Here's a more pictorial view. Of here, as we saw in the video, I use the 10-foot aluminum section. You can use the aluminum or copper. It's easier. It doesn't matter. The RF transformer here. And this is an F-type connector that the range extender uses on theirs. Okay. Here's the coil, the tuning coil. I got mine from Mike's Electronic Parts. There's the part number. $4 for that. They've got a few different types. This is the one I use that you can slide the ferrite in and out to tune this. Pretty simple circuit. Here's the inside look of the antenna tuner in the box. Here's the coil. I glued the nylon screw onto the ferret so it twists in and out for tuning. And it works good. It just takes a little longer to tune up to peak. That's the coil craft RF 4 to 1 ballon transformer, the meter circuit. Used a nylon screw, glued this nut, super glue, and this is the lock nut. So when you get it tuned, simply lock it in place. This is the knob, two nuts jammed together. This needs to be retuned, just simply move the jam nut, tune that. You can see the slug moves in and out. See there? Zero to one milliamp meter. This 50k ohm trim pot is with the meter to adjust it. It's finished. I'm going to tune it at 1620. No modulation. You can see on the scope, I've got no modulation set up. So there's a meter. Now I'm going to tune this for peak. There it is. Okay, now this modulation from the transmitter will peak it for that. I got just a little bit more out of it. And so I peak it right there and with modulation. So there it is, tuned up maximum. I've also put a couple of probe jacks on this. So if I wanted to take an external meter for the tuning, put a meter on it plus and the minus. There's the peak. Tune for the maximum number. It looks like that's going to do it. Now, lock down the jam nut. There it is. And you see the numbers are good. That's the peak reading. The modulation of the scope looks really good on the test tones. Now I can close the lid. Now ready to try this on the air installed. Here's the transmitter now. We're going to test the antenna and we're putting some music on but now I'm going to change it to a tone so I'm going to set it for 100% modulation. There it is. Got 100% modulation. Here's the coax. The cable that goes up to the range extender goes out here. Comes out right there. See that? 
There it is. So we're going to go up there and we'll check it now. So here's where I mounted the antenna. There's the coax. Yeah. This one is the antenna. See it goes right up there. Here's the weather cover and we're going to check the tuning of it. I'm going to use this multimeter. Meter is in the red where I left it last time. 1.55 volts, the sample voltage. I'm going to peak that by turning this. Here it goes. And it looks like we just passed the peak. And there it is. And I carefully turn the lock nut. And there it is. We've tuned that. Verify that it's tuned. Close the cover on it. Now I'm going to take the field strength meter. I'm holding the meter right here. If I get it too close, well, you can see it goes up. So it's putting out a good signal. Again, this is just an arbitrary reading. Just gives you some indication. So anyway, there it is. Okay, we're back in the shack. I'm gonna, that loud, obnoxious tone that you hear on the radio is from this. That's because I've got the test generator on. So I'm going to turn it off and return it back to programming. The red light means we're hitting 95% positive peak and negative peak modulation. It's good. First me, I call them fake issue. <laughs> So here we are in the car. It's a signal that's on the air. I would say it's working okay. That's what I'm transmitting. Um, and we'll try a different radio here. Hi, I'm Richard with over 20 years. And we specialize in water distribution. We may be always free. Up to seventy dollars. From all of us here at Valdez Brothers Club and Heating. Fall into cash every Friday in September and Camp from six p.m. to nine p.m. Where you could win your share of over fifty-eight thousand dollars in a big on Mondays and ten times entries on Thursdays and Fridays. So it's good. Native American and I'm um, fair. The event center at Go will return on. I'm about a quarter mile that direction from my house. We'll look on the map and see where I'm at here. So we can see how far we are to get that we get this signal. Here's the map. I was up here. 1400 feet.